guys so welcome to mini palais session number one so i am mostly super excited but for the topic of today's palais session so 2020 is undoubtedly going to go down in history what will be said about it remains to be seen we have half of a crazy year down and half to go so today's party session is going to be about George Floyd, God bless his soul, asphyxia and cardiopulmonary arrest. So I should start by emphasizing that the manner of death in both autopsies was found to be homicide. That means death by the hand of another or in this case by the knee of another. And so in my opinion that's all that should matter. I dread the loopholes and the excuses that the defense attorneys are going to come up with, but one must believe that justice will prevail. So onto the cause of death. What is public knowledge currently about the autopsies is that one said he died from asphyxia by, from sustained pressure and another cardiopulmonary arrest due to restraints and neck compression. So what's the difference? I've thought about it and I'm going to tell you the technical differences but really and truly I think the answer is there is no difference and it really shouldn't matter. So asphyxia. Most of us think of, think of asphyxia as suffocation or being choked and indeed this can cause asphyxiation but let's get a deeper understanding of what happened. Um, asphyxia means that someone is not getting enough oxygen. It's not just that they can't breathe. Breathing brings the oxygen into your body, but then it has to pass through your lungs into your circulation, and then the blood has to circulate the oxygen to all your different organs. So the, the thing we have to remember here is that lack of oxygen. That's the more, more important part than simply thinking, I can't breathe. Breathing involves a clear airway and the ability to expand your chest. The knee that was in his back would have affected the ability for him to expand his chest and that would have impaired his breathing. Um, but and the, the, the pressure on his neck, that could potentially have obstructed his airway, but there's something more important about that pressure on his neck. And that takes us kind of into part two. So we spoke about breathing, but what about circulation? So it takes approximately five pounds of pressure to compress the big neck vein, that's the jugular vein, compared to the 33 pounds of pressure that it takes to compress the trachea, that's the airway. So even though it, it's a possibility that his trachea was compressed, it's almost certain that the, there was five pounds of pressure on this jugular vein and the five to 20 pounds of pressure that it takes to compress the big artery in the neck, which is the carotid artery. So what does this mean? This means that blood was not getting to his brain and blood was not returning to his heart, which means blood was not circulating throughout his body, leading to asphyxia, death. So it was very ignorant and is very ignorant of people to say that, well, he was talking so he could breathe. Breathing isn't everything. It isn't the only thing that we need. The blood also needs to circulate, otherwise the oxygen doesn't get to your tissues. So impaired breathing plus no circulation equals asphyxial death. So let's slide on over into autopsy number two. Um, manner of death, still homicide, just want to make that clear. But the cause of death they said was cardiopulmonary arrest. Cardio means heart, pulmonary means lung, arrest means stop. So his heart and lungs stopped. If your heart and lungs stop, you'll die. Um, so what caused it? Well, many things can cause a cardiac arrest the question is what caused it in this case when it comes to restraints the thinking is that um the compression of the airway plus the compression of the chest plus the adrenaline that's released when you're fighting for your life because we know that adrenaline is to the fight and flight uh, hormone so when you're fighting for your life all that adrenaline released in the midst of that physical restraint causes the heart to stop but let's just get it clear Either way guys, either way, the man was killed. So not only was he restrained to death, but even after he went unconscious, nothing was done to help him. First responders are trained on how to respond when someone loses consciousness. You call their name, you check their pulse, which was likely absent in Mr. Floyd. You tell someone to call 911 and you begin chest compressions. This protocol is instituted worldwide 
when someone loses consciousness and yet the man lost consciousness and you continue to as asphyxiate him without instituting any life-saving measures until he dies. What manner of evil is that? Finally, let's talk about the evil of implying that something else caused him to die. Yes, drugs can cause cardiac arrest. Yes, atherosclerosis, which means diseased arteries and veins, can cause uh, cardiac arrest. But are we really going to ignore the knee compressing the man's neck, stopping the blood from returning to his heart? Spin me, please. <laughs> Spin me. So guys, this, is just an, this was just an explanation of the autopsy findings from a doctor's perspective. Um, really and truly, it doesn't really matter. One says asphyxia, one says cardiopulmonary arrest, both say homicide, and that's all we need to know. See you soon.